Hey Algebra students, how you doing? Today we're going to be looking at exponential functions and in particular, fun in particular the graphs of the exponential functions. So what's an exponential function you may be asking? Well it's a function of the sort y equals b times a to the x. So we have two parameters here, b and a, kind of like a linear function. Uh, and as a matter of fact, there's going to be some similarities to linear functions, as we'll see in a few minutes. And um, now, what's different here, you may be looking at this and you may be thinking, oh, well, this looks kind of like a polynomial. No, it's not a polynomial, because x is now in your exponent. x isn't down here. x is up in the exponent. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a very different type of function. So let's start with a, uh, a, a pretty simple um, example and that is y equals 2 to the x. So in this case, b is 1 and a is 2, okay? Uh, and let's think about what we know about uh, powers of 2. Well, we know that 2 to the 1 power is 2. We know that 2 to the 0 power, like anything to the 0 power, is 1. We know that 2 to the 2 power, that's 2 squared, is 4. 2 to the 3rd power is 8. 2 to the 4th power is 16. We know that 2 to the negative 1 is 1 half. We know that 2 to the negative 2 power is 1 fourth. And we know that 2 to the negative 3 is 1 eighth. Okay? We've seen this table before. As x is stepping up by 1, y is doubling each time. Okay? It's being multiplied by 2. And as we go up the graph, y is being cut in half. Okay? So let's think about if we went up, I said up the graph, I meant up the table. Let's think about if we went up this table kind of indefinitely. As x gets smaller and smaller and smaller, what happens to y here? Well, it just gets cut in half. It gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Does it ever reach to zero though? Well, think about it. No, no matter what you have when you cut it in half, you still have something there that's left. So y will never become zero, but it's gonna get really, really close. And over here, as x gets bigger and bigger and bigger, y gets bigger and bigger at a faster rate. Okay, when x is 5, y is 32, then 64, then 128. As a matter of fact, when x is only 10, y gets up to 1,024. So it gets really big, really fast. Um, let's, let's graph this, okay? Uh, let me get rid of this. And let's pull up a... Uh, a graph. Here we go. Okay, so this is, and let me change this to uh, f of x equals 2 to the x power. Um, here are some of the points that we just saw a few minutes ago, or a few seconds ago. Here's the point 0, 1. Here's the point 1, 2. Here's the point 2, 4, 3, 8. Up here is the point 4, 16. And then as you can see, here's negative 1, 1 half, negative 2 1 fourth, negative 3 1 eighth. And so as you go on and on and on here, it gets closer and closer and closer to the x-axis. And let's just go ahead and uh, connect those dots. And it's going to look like this, an exponential graph. Okay? Now, let's focus on the left just for a second. As we said, this gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, but it never actually touches the x-axis. It just gets infinitely close to the x-axis without touching it, okay? And the x-axis is, is uh, in this graph, what we call an asymptote, okay? It's an asymptote. And an asymptote is exactly what we just described. It's a line that your graph gets infinitely close to without ever actually touching, okay? Over on the right side, we get this big swoop, and, uh, and it gets really, really steep. As a matter of fact, if we zoomed out here, we would see that it gets incredibly steep as you go along. It looks like it's becoming vertical. It doesn't. It never becomes absolutely vertical because you can always take another step to the right. It's just that when you take a step to the right, it shoots way, way, way up. Uh, exponential curves are about as, well, it, you have a hard time finding anything steeper than, a, than an exponential. Uh, Okay, so let's look at different exponential curves. Let's look at, uh, here we go. And let's get rid of that. There's still an asymptote. Okay, so 
what we have here are four exponential graphs. They are all of the sort y equals a to the x, something to the x power, okay? Uh, this orange one here is y equals 1.5 to the x power. The red one is the one that we just saw a second ago, y equals 2 to the x power. The blue one is y equals 3 to the x power, and the green one is y equals 4 to the x power. And what you see is, as your a gets bigger and bigger and bigger, this gets steeper and steeper and steeper. Kind of, you know, that, that makes sense, because y equals 4 to the x power, well, when when x is 1, y is going to be 4, as opposed to over here when x is 1, y is just 1.5. And when x is 2, y is going to be 16, as opposed to over here when uh, x is 2, y is just going to be 2.25. So as a, gets, as a gets bigger, the turn here gets sharper, okay? And I don't know if you can see it, but even on the left side as well, your green curve is underneath all the other ones, it gets closer to zero faster as you're going to the left. Um, now, you've probably noticed, hey, they all seem to be meeting right there. Yes, they do. They meet at this point, zero, one. Why? Just think about it for a second. A to the zero power is one. Doesn't matter what the A is, it's always gonna be one, okay? So now let's see uh, well, let's, let's, let's take, a, take a look at some more graphs. Actually, let's take a look at this one graph here. Uh, what happens when, uh, when I change A, okay? This is, again, this is Y equals two to the uh, X power. But what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna make A bigger. And as we saw, it gets steeper and steeper and steeper. And as I make A smaller, it gets less and less steep. And as A gets to be one, it just becomes flat like that. Now, why is that? Why would that just become a flat line? Well, it's Y equals one to the X power. One to the anything power is always just one. And so you just get the curve well, you get the line y equals one, which is a rather uninteresting horizontal line, okay? Now what happens when a becomes less than one? When a becomes less than one, it swoops up on the left. Ha ha. Now why is that? Well, let me go back to our prior graph just for a second, and I'm gonna highlight this one and this one, okay? This is the graph of y equals two to the x. This is the graph of y equals one half to the x. And you'll notice there's some nice symmetry there. It's, it's kind of pretty. Uh, as a matter of fact, y equals one half to the x power seems to be just this function flipped over the y-axis, reflected over the y-axis. And as it turns out, that's exactly right. And why is that? Because one half to the x power is one to the x power over two to the x power. And as we said a second ago, one to the x power is just one. And one over two to the x power, shoot, that's two to the negative x. Okay, we know about negative exponents. Uh, and so we know also from, uh, from graphing that if you change x to negative x, what happens to your graph? It flips over, it reflects over the y-axis. Okay. So any time that, uh, uh, that you have an A that is gonna be less than one, your big swoop is gonna go to the left instead of to the right. Okay. So let's go back to this other graph. So this is what happens. So, so here we have A is less than one. A is never gonna be zero or less. Okay, that, uh, the exponential functions that we're looking at right now, uh, A is always going to be greater than zero. Uh, if you look at an A that is less than zero, you end up with a graph that is no longer continuous. And just at this point in our education, it's not particularly interesting. What's interesting for us right now are continuous graphs where A is gonna be greater than zero. Not zero, but greater than zero, okay? But when it's less than one, 
meaning between zero and one, it's gonna have this swoop going up like that. So now let's change B. Let me put this back, I'm gonna put A back on two. And now let's change B. What happens when B gets bigger? Ah, I see. The Y intercept changes, okay? It moves up here. As a matter of fact, uh, when B is the point, when B is 6.1, I wonder what our Y intercept is. Our Y intercept is, oh, the point zero, 6.1. Okay, that makes sense. Because what we're doing is, we're taking a graph that used to go through the point zero, 01 and we're multiplying it by b. So it's going to go through the point zero b. Okay? That's a very good thing to know that zero b is going to be your y intercept of, uh, of your exponential curve. Okay? Well, that's what, uh, that's what happens when b gets bigger. What about when b gets smaller? Well, it gets, whoa, it flips over. Okay? B is negative one right now. So when B turns negative, it's gonna be flipping down here. So what we've seen is when you have a swoop that's going up and to the right, that means B is positive and A is bigger than one. When we have a swoop that's going up and to the left, that means B is positive and A is less than one, between zero and one. When your swoop is going down and to the right, that means B is negative and A is greater than one. And let's see, when you have swoop going down into the left, that's when A is less than one and B is negative. So it can swoop in one of four directions, but that always tells you something about a and B. Remember, this is Y equals B times A to the X power. Okay? Let's look at some examples. Here's an example. Let's get rid of this stuff. Okay. So we have an example here of an exponential curve. We can tell it's an exponential curve because you've got the asymptote here and you've got that big swoop going up like that. And it's going to the point 0, uh, 0.5 and 2, 8. Now remember, this is going to be a, a function of the type y equals b times a to the x. Immediately I know what b is. What is it? It's 0 0.5. How do I know? Because that's the y-intercept. Okay, so y equals, I'm going to call it 1 half. It's the same thing as 0 0.5. 1 half times a to the x power. Uh, now, how do I find out what a is? Well, let's use this other point right here. When x is 2, y is 8. Okay? 8 equals 1 half times a to the 2 power. All right, well, uh, let's solve for a then. I'm going to multiply both sides by 2, thereby getting rid of that 1 half, and I get 16 equals a squared. Remember, a is always going to be a positive number, so don't say plus or minus 4, just say 4. a is going to be 4. So this is the graph of y equals one-half times four to the x power. And sure enough, uh, four to the zero power is one, and one-half of that is 0.5. And four to the two power is 16, and one-half of that is eight. Okay? Let's look at another example. All right. Uh, okay. This time... Hmm, I don't know what my y-intercept is, but I have a couple of points here, okay? I have uh, the point 218 and the point 354. So again, remember this is y equals b times a to the x power. And if it goes to the point 218, what does that tell me? It tells me that 18 is uh, b times a to the 2 power. And if it goes to the point 354, that tells me that 54 is b times a to the third power. Now, how can I use those two facts to figure out what a and b are? It's actually pretty easy. Divide them, okay? When you divide them, well, b over b, that's just one. And a to the third divided by a to the second, 
that's just A. And 54 over 18, I believe that is 3. So that tells me right off the bat that A is 3. So that means I have Y equals B times 3 to the X. And how can I figure out what B is now? Either one of the points will tell me. Um, let's see. I'll do this, uh, this one right here. I have 18 equals B times 3 to the second power. That's 9 times B. 18 equals 9 times B. I think B is 2. So that tells me Y equals 2 times 3 to the X power. And that's exactly what it is. Let's do another one. I love these. Oh, it's swooping to the left. Look out, people. All right. So it's swooping to the left. So this time, I know already that B is going to be, it's swooping up. So B is going to be positive, And A is going to be between 0 and 1. So B is positive and A is between 0 and 1. Okay, so what are the points that I have here? I have the point negative 2, 1.125, and negative 1, 0 0.75. Okay, uh, well, let's see. What does that tell me? It tells me that uh, B times A to the negative 1 power equals 0.75, okay? That's my x, that's my y. And it also tells me that b times a to the negative 2 power equals 1.125. And again, just divide them. The b's go away because b over b is 1. And a to the negative 1 divided by a to the negative 2 is a to the negative 1 minus negative 2, which is a to the 1. So this is just... Uh, a equals 0.75 over 1.125. If I had a calculator, I'd just pop that in the calculator and figure out what it is. Uh, I don't. So let's see. 0.75 is 3 fourths. 1.125, I happen to know that that is 1 and 1 eighth, so I'll call it 9 eighths. So that's going to be 3 fourths times 8 over 9. And 3 over 9 is just 1 over 3. And 8 over 4 is just 2 over 1. And that tells me it's two-thirds. Okay, so uh, A is two-thirds, so I have Y equals B times two-thirds to the X power. Let's plug in either one of these points. I usually go for the one that's closer to zero. Um, so that tells me that Y, so oops, Y is going to be 0.75, three-fourths, equals B times two-thirds to the negative one power. I know what two-thirds to the negative one power is. That's uh, three halves. So three-fourths equals b times three halves. I'm just going to multiply both sides by two-thirds, and I get b equals three-fourths times two-thirds, and that's one-half. So that means my, uh, uh, my function here is y equals one-half times two-thirds to the x power. All right, cool. Let's do another one. And uh, okay, this time I am swooping down and to the left. Okay, down and to the left. Uh, to the left tells me that A is between zero and one, and down tells me that B is gonna be less than zero this time. Okay, let's do the same thing. Uh, here I have one negative two, so negative two equals b times a to the one. Here I have negative two, negative 54. So negative 54 equals b times a to the negative two, and I'm going to divide both of them. And uh, so what does that get me? Well, again, b over b is just one, uh, a to the 1 over a to the negative 2 is a to the 1 minus negative 2, which is a to the third power. And negative 2 over negative 54 is just 1 over 27. So what it means is something to the third power is 1 over 27. And uh, 
again, if I had a calculator, I guess I could say, well, 1 27th to the 1 3rd power. But as it turns out, I know what number to the third power 1 27th is, and that's 1 3rd, okay? So A is 1 3rd. How do I find out B? Just plug it into one of these uh, uh, points here. Again, I always take the one that's closer to the origin. Uh, so I'm going to have negative 2 equals B times 1 3rd to the 1 power, okay? Uh, all right, well, 1 3rd to the 1 power is just 1 3rd. And in order to get rid of that 1 3rd, I'll multiply both sides by 3, and I get negative 6 equals B. And so now I have my A, I have my B, and that means I have my function, which is Y equals negative 6, yep, sure enough, B is less than 0, times 1 3rd, sure enough, A is between 0 and 1, to the X power, and that's my function. Okay, I hope these examples have helped. Uh, exponential functions, you, they're, they're great stuff, okay? Uh, this is going to lead into some really interesting stuff. But we'll have to wait until later for that. And until next video, bye-bye.